So, have you thought things through? Hmm? Go ahead, speak. As always, to follow in the footsteps of Akivili. Sometimes we stop on other worlds, and we'll continue to do so. There are countless next stops in the galaxy. I love the vast reaches of space, and the Express does too. I want to seek out new worlds, and the Express wants to return to its former path. <laughs> There's no need to be so formal. You helped us defeat that big fella anyway. Plus, if we keep making pleasant, you've done me a huge favor by defending the space station from the Antimatter Legion. And know that while Herda may not admit it, she owes me one. She won't refuse me if I ask for a favor in return. And it's probably not too much to ask for a rare item from the space station, right? How about we continue talking on the Express? I'll make you a cup of coffee. My special blend. So? Have you- So? Have you thought things through? Then come with me. The way <laughs> to celebrate. Let's go. I'll be waiting. Time to get on. Till we make it. Oh. Take the journey. Hey, you over there looking dumbfounded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express. And everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. You know young people. Their rooms always reflect their personality. You can go and have a look around. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the Express for a long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back.
Here already? Hmm. I was just engaging in pleasantries. How can I help? Oh? Why are you interested in her room? Ah, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. She's always running around, so she might not be there. Don Hong's room? Oh, you mean the archives. Uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Hmm? Who's there? Ah, oh, it's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Can I help you? Feel free. This is open to everyone on the Express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the Express. I enter the collected data into the Archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the Express encounters, and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already. is unlocked. Just one look should be... Make a choice I won't regret. Reach the future. So much has happened in such a short time. Warp jump. All passengers, please gather. <sighs> you 
It took long enough. But at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. March, always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. experienced a warp jump too, but I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Well, it is a little abstract, but basically you just need to pinpoint what's bothering you. The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might. That doesn't mean it won't work. The best method for relieving anxiety is the one that works, right? universe, the Astral Express, eons, <sighs> did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? The Stellaron thing in my body. Are you trying to catch the stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before, but it wasn't stars for me though. It was light. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. I don't remember a thing. Who I am, where I'm from, my name like everything was erased from my mind. 
March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh. <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about... 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself. And falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you! Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. <laughs> but I'm thirsty now. Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place. But after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. Jumps are like this. They may feel novel the first few times, but you'll slowly get used to them after a few more. As for the mechanism, well, if you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. For now, just sit and wait. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stop over time, extended indefinitely. Hmm... The complex locality of this world has been... affected somehow. The star rail has been blocked off by something. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a stellar run, as always. Yes, 
just like the one that's been placed into your body. Don't worry, it's not the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Urielo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. Trust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for Urelo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. 